Welcome to the video for what is a UMG user widget. When you go ahead and you create a new user interface widget blueprint, let's go ahead and name this for our example. And open it up, you will find that an actual user interface widget is a child of a parent class user widget. The user widget passes along a few parameters that we will go over in this video. By default, you will find that they are sorted by the parent slot at the top, then any individual unique behaviors for that widget itself, and then you'll find the actual root widget parameters under that. Let's drop in an image and we'll use this as our example. So we have an image. At the top you'll notice slot and that's our standard canvas panel slot so we can ignore that. At the bottom we'll notice events. We'll go and ignore that as that's part of the image. And then we'll go ahead and close the appearance section as that is unique to the image itself. What we have left is behavior, performance, render transform, and navigation. These are what the user widget gives to everything that is a child of the base user widget class. We'll go over them briefly and explain what they do. So let me go ahead and hook up my user widget so we can see an example of it. So here we go. Okay, so for our user widget itself, first option we have is is enabled. This determines whether or not the widget is enabled. It's pretty simple. Most widgets will have a disabled state. Some of them you can change, such as the button. Some of them you cannot, such as the image. So if we go to disable and we run this, you'll notice the image is gray and nothing happens. That's the default disabled state, and that's what you can use if you want it to accept input or maybe just show it's disabled by graying it out. Under that, we have a section called tooltip text. Now this allows us to create a quick and simple tooltip such as this is my tooltip. And if we go ahead and run this and mouse over, you'll find it says this is my tooltip. It's nice and easy way to make easily customizable and bindable tooltips. You have the standard visibility options for the actual object itself. Let's say we set it to hidden and run it. You'll notice it's gone because well, it's hidden. Standard visibility, nothing fancy there. Now, for the tooltip itself, you have a widget. You can actually create your own user interface widget, style it, and then apply it, and then your tooltip will look something different than just the standard white box with black text. We have cursor. If we enable this and change this to one of the selected cursors, like let's say hand and run, we now have a hand icon when we go over the widget. It's nice to make things easily selectable and identifiable for what you can do with that widget. Now one caveat is if we disable our widget and have a tooltip, the tooltip will work but you'll notice that the cursor does not. That's because the cursor only works when you have the widget enabled. So we will go to the next section as soon as I figure out what it, there we go. That was weird. Next section is performance. This is an experimental feature. You can pretty much ignore it for now, but basically in the future, it's going to let you determine what is and is not active, such as, let's say you have a background image. Well, this background image is not going to change. It's going to stay static. So for performance reasons, Unreal Engine will cache it. But let's say you have something that will animate or you have a material that needs to move. This will allow you to tell it Unreal Engine that it's going to move so it won't cache it. So it's just, it's useful in the future. For now, you can ignore it. We have our navigation at the bottom. This determines whether, you, when you are using joystick navigation, if it will stop using, when you're using like, for example, the keyboard up, down, left, right, or tab, or you're using the up, down, left, right thumbstick or joystick on a controller, whether it will stop at this widget or it will continue on. So for example, you might make your background set to that way it's escape, it never stops. And you might want to change, you know, your order, for example, you might have button one, two, and three, and you might want to set an explicit order when you go from button one and you push right. You can do explicit and you set up your next button. It's a way for you manually to control the navigation with your keyboard or joystick on the controls. Lastly, we have the render transform. 
I went ahead and made this image so that way it makes it easier to see what we do when we change it. Translation, X and Y, adjust the translation. So if we adjust the X, it will move our image to the right, positive or negative. If we adjust the Y, it'll move our image up or down. The actual position will stay exactly where we have put it according to our slot, but this is just basically an offset on top of that. We have scale. Scale is a little bit wonky. It lets you change things up and down, but I personally do not use scale. I have noticed it has issues from time to time when you're trying to get exact dimensions. I would recommend just simply changing the size or use a size widget to change the size of each child. You have shear. Shear basically shifts one of the sides, either on the X or the Y. As you can see, I'm shearing X and Y, and this is the result. So it's a nice way maybe to get a warp effect or something like that. We'll go ahead and reset those. And then we have angle. Angle is basically the angle of, it's a rotation of the item from zero, from negative 180 to 180, with zero as the default. Now for the most part, that's not very useful, but you have the pivot. Just like any of our other pivots or alignments, zero, zero is the top left, one, one is the bottom right. So let's say for example, we wanna make this look like it's hanging off. We could move our pivot to the top left and then adjust our angle and you'll notice it kind of looks like it's hanging off at the edge. So there you go. That is a good basic breakdown of our base user widget. You will find that any user interface widget you create will have all of these options and hopefully they will help you out in the future.